One of the questions I get asked a lot at every event, every keynote, every consulting gig, and from students everywhere, parents everywhere, when should they introduce AI to their kids? If they even should introduce AI to their kids. Hi, Joel Pearson here, the neurofuturist. So I thought I'd give this uh, question a bit of time and give my thoughts on the topic. So first up, let's separate out the AI for AI companions and the AI tools. So here's my take on AI companions. You may have heard it already, but introducing or letting your kids use AI companion is a hard no. There's emerging data from a lot of different uh, court cases now where they're looking into the transcripts and what we're seeing is that young brains, remember the frontal cortex, a bit of the brain up here in the front, doesn't really finish developing until the mid-20s, 24, 25 years of age. So keep that in mind, as well as during the teenage years, most brains are full of hormones. The brain is very plastic, it's very malleable. Those hormones, that those brain changes are affecting social dynamics and a lot of things with in the young mind. Letting young people loose letting them use AI companions can be very dangerous it can warp their sense of reality it can build these feedback loops where they get positive reinforcement and that bit by bit by bit changes their worldview changes their really their whole understanding of reality should you let your kids use an AI companion that's a hard no I don't think you should you should hold off for as long as possible for 18 years plus or even longer if that's a, a possibility there are a lot of people millions of young people using AI companions at the moment all around the world so have that conversation you may think they're using social media or just something else on their phone or their computer but please have that conversation really talk to them about the dangers of using that so with AI companions hard no just talk your kids out of it if you can now when it comes to all the other ai products the tools the chat gpt claw gemini these kinds of productive tools it's a little bit different now to understand this bit more we have to put things uh, in context in a larger context the meta context of what's going on at the moment we are seeing a shift in the way uh work is done we are seeing AI become part of everyday work and we're seeing AI, yes, take jobs. The One of the logical conclusions of that is I think we're gonna see more and more work take on more project-based work where people are using all the tools available to them. Yes, AI and future AI products and soon robotics as well. So if you sort of, without dive, doing a deep dive into that right now, what does that mean? It means we have to think about introducing AI to our children, our kids at some stage. So I think one of the important things to do here is to give children and students the sort of experience of finding projects and goals they want to do. Yes, they can be profitable, they could be non-profit, whatever kind of things they want to do, but they have to use the idea of them being the owner of their own projects. So the crucial thing to get them to think about is how to align motivation, purpose, and drive with achieving these kinds of goals or even choosing the topics they want to work on and the projects they want to work on. So they need some iterations in the belt. They need to practice doing this. How can they align something that they want to do in the world with their motivation, with their drive, with their purpose, things that mean a lot to them? So a natural part of that, that project kind of style work is to use AI. So I think it's important to think about and start introducing AI fairly young, not young children, but in that sort of early teens sort of area. Now, what I'm not a fan of is giving hard and fast rules. Use this product and not this product. One, because different projects and different people will use different projects differently, but also these products are changing so rapidly. Whatever hard advice I tell you today probably won't be the same in a week or a month and definitely won't be the same next year in 2026. What I like to do is equip you with a framework to think about this question, think about which AI products and how to introduce them to your children. Now, I like to think of this a, on a spectrum of how stimulating and how addictive these AI products are. Now, if you're a parent like me, you will have gone from um, reading your children books to them looking at books to perhaps showing them a video. And you can see clearly their reaction to these different kinds of media. As you move up that chain, there's more stimulation and yes, a little bit more addiction. Simply going from a book, a paper book version to a digital book version to a video version of that book, 
there's more, there's sound, there's stimulation, there's music, there's bright colors, and that's going to stimulate their brains a lot more. And they're going to start craving that stimulation. Then as you move, I guess, to the right of this spectrum, you could think about then sort of AI products and social media, and these things get more and more addictive. There's intermittent rewards and social dynamics come into it. The best way to think about this for now, at least, is on this spectrum of how stimulating, how addictive are these AI products. Now, when it comes to AI itself, there are some products that tend to, or has historically have been more addictive. They have been more sycophantic. They have been more prone to um, being giving really positive feedback and building these sort of feedback loops of your idea is fantastic no matter what the idea is, that has changing, it was changing at the moment as well. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. We want to practice introducing types of AI or AI tools that are less stimulating, less reinforcing, less addictive. Of course, the business model of these products is also interesting here. If the product and the evaluation of the company is reliant on the amount of use, the amount of hours people use these products every day, they have a financial incentive to make it more engaging and make the engagements go for longer. So that's something also to keep an eye out. So in summary, it's a hard no for any AI companions or friendships or anything that simulates this social interaction, artificial intimacy, but it's a yes with caution for AI products. Think of ways to bring them in practically. Try and let your, or educate your children about what an AI is and what it's not, how they can use it as a tool to achieve these goals. Talk about critical thinking, talk about sort of this idea of cognitive upsizing, how they can not just output everything to an AI, but still think very deeply. As soon as they give some tasks to AI to help them with their projects what other things can they think about what other big picture questions can they deeply try and think about aligning their purpose motivation and goals with things that can help the world so think about what you want to do is help them to latch onto a project and for them to be the owner of that project and for them to wrestle with that feeling of how can they turn up something they're passionate about into something that is productive and useful for society, perhaps profitable in the long term. So how to bring all these together. And it won't happen straight away, but they need sort of runs on the board. They need to practice going through that selection experience of bringing those things together, how to choose them, how to tap into that feeling of purpose, motivation. So yes, we need to start thinking about how to bring AI into our children's life, but we need to do it uh, carefully, proactively, and with guidance from us. Remember, their brains are still developing, so we want to reduce the amount of stimulation, the amount of addictiveness. I hope this helps. If you want to hear more about these topics, you can subscribe on Substack to the Neurofuturist newsletter. It's a weekly summary of all things that are happening around the AI revolution that are relevant to you, your mind, your brain, how you think and your life to societal impact. It's not financial based, it's not tech related, it's not just giving you the latest tech news. It's really the news filtered down to what's relevant to you, your brain, and your mind.